Where a lot of folks have gotten tripped up and gotten caught up is the prosperity gospel. Most people will publicly say, uh-uh, I'm not about that prosperity gospel, but then secretly be like, man, I need more money. I'm singing, God, I need you to bless me. God, I need a check in the mail. God, I need this. But the prosperity gospel teaches the more you do for God, the more God will bless you. I don't ascribe to either the prosperity gospel nor the poverty gospel. What he, Alejandro, heard me teach about is the purpose gospel. So and good. the purpose gospel, y'all, is that whatever God has called called me to do, whatever God has called me to fulfill in the earth, that I am required to go after the resources necessary to fulfill that thing on the earth. So it's not about just acquiring money to have money. It's about acquiring money to fulfill purpose. Yo, yo, hey, here with my my boy, Jamal Miller. How's it going, my man? Alejandro, what's up, my brother? I'm doing good, dude. So honored to be on the podcast, man. Well, check this out, man. I, I didn't tell you this before. You didn't know this. You're actually the very first guest on the podcast. You're the first inter- You're the yeah. first recording. <laughs> I got to take it like, that's like a holy, I know this, this podcast called Holy Hustle. That just put me into a holy hush. <laughs> you know, that's just like, I mean, that's just like a really holy hush moment, bro. I'm honored, man. That's that's incredible. I, I just, you know, I, I love your story so much, and I love you've been so inspiring. Just watching you, um, I love how much you love your family, and uh, I love that you uh, love your family deeply. But you love business and wealth creation, um, and 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 doing it honor honoring God in in all you do. And um, you know what they say? I read a stat that the first podcast guests will make or break the podcast. I'm just messing, man. I just messing. I just messing, bro. I just so no, you so better no pray. You better pray now. I hope you got a prayer life, Alejandro. I pray you got a prayer life, bro. <laughs> I, I, I do now. I do now. No, man. Well, well, you've been a friend. Uh, you know, you've been someone I look up to and a, and a mentor as well. And um, just just love all that you're doing and building businesses for thought leaders and influencers. But at the same time, um, building your own brand um, as well. So um, I, I won't normally do this with podcasts, getting into everybody's backstories. But your story, just listening to some of the interviews that you've done, watching some of your YouTube clips, your story is so tied to who you are today. And so can you talk a little bit about that story of what got you to where you're at today and maybe start when you became a youth pastor at 17. Yeah. Um, just to kind of give the hook, right. Um, I am what you call an accidental entrepreneur. And I think I'm sure majority of your folks listening in right now probably would relate to that, that this was not a part of the original plan in regards to your career or your life path. Just some things have happened within the last three months, two years, five years that you began to say, I've got to look for other options to make money, to take care of my family, to secure my future. What are those options? And that's when you maybe have stumbled upon Alejandro or stumbled upon a podcast or a YouTube show that began to talk about this thing called digital marketing and course creation and and all of the success people are having, that's exactly, I am an accident in this because I was headed down a path of full-time ministry. I was a youth pastor, background in theology. I was 100% committed to preaching the gospel for the rest of my life from a pulpit. That's the idea, right? The idea was that I'll be behind the pulpit. I am still preaching the gospel, but instead of being behind the pulpit, I'm behind a computer screen and a microphone. And that's been the shift that the Lord had to do was, hey, I am calling you to change people's lives, but it will not be by filling up a a four-walled building. It's going to be by you filling up Zoom meetings and webinars and doing massive launches to truly begin to pastor the internet. And so that's that call, man. It started clearly, you know, 16 years old, a call to people, you know, preaching uh, on the top of a lunch table in my high school and seeing hundreds of kids come to know Christ. That's when I was marked and I knew that I was called to change lives. And so for following that journey and to, you know, becoming a youth pastor, like you said, and then meeting my wife on Facebook, complete stranger. We met on Facebook, put our story on YouTube called the Facebook love story that goes viral. And that was our introduction into this game or this world of digital marketing. And we haven't stopped since. You guys are, are, are crushing it. Um, and you guys just uh, launched in beta. I don't know if it's still in beta. I'd love to talk about Sunday plus later, but this is the first podcast and a lot of Christians have this, um, this idea about money. 
and I, I was sure. recently watching a, a podcast of yours or a video of yours, you talking about the three gospels of money. And I didn't, on, prep, man, yeah. I didn't, I didn't prep you for this, but <laughs> it, it's such a, it's such a dicey thing. And, and, um, and when you said that I, it made so much sense to me and it's, it's, it's the theology of money that I would buy into. Can you talk about these three different gospels of money? Yeah. Well, first off, we all have to agree that Jesus talked about money more than he talked about many other major topics that Christians stumble over every single day as it pertains to being something that God cares a lot about. Mm -hmm. And then there's this topic that we think that God doesn't care about or he stays away from. And that's that idea of money that, hey, God doesn't want us to be rich. That shouldn't be our value system. That should be something we worry about. But at the end of the day, this is something according to the word of God that is important. And it's so interesting before I even go into breaking down the gospels, that if you look at the word of God, literally, it says in Matthew that there are two gods that you potentially would serve, and that is going to be God or mammon. I think it's very interesting that God compared himself to this being the chief other adversary, enemy, comparison to me, and it being money. Now, it's always interesting, bro. Like, if you really look at the example, if anything is going to be compared to something else, it's got to be as equally powerful. So it's like, hey, where are you going to go? Are you going to go to Walmart or are you going to go to Target? Like, uh -uh, I'm going to Target. You don't see anybody saying, hey, are you going to go to Walmart or are you going to go to the mom and pop shop down in downtown? Like, no, that the comparison is because we know that there's equal power between you choosing Target or Walmart. Hey, are you going to end up going to, you know, to uh, to the Bahamas? Or are you going to go to Jamaica? You know what I'm saying? It's like, ah, you know, I don't really know yet. Now, you're not going to be like, hey, I'm going to go. Are you going to the Bahamas or are you going to go to Iowa? It's just like, it's just like, man, I mean, that's an easy choice. I'm going to the Bahamas, right? So anytime something is compared together, it's because there is this equal potential power for this thing to pull you in a moment of confusion. That's what God did. He said, listen, there's two things that's going to have the opportunity to have your heart. It's going to be either God, me, or it's going to be money. That's how powerful money is. And now that was a little sermon moment for y'all, right? And then we go into this opportunity to now, as believers, have to make a decision of what I have seen over the last decade of being involved in wealth creation mm. There are three perspectives of this gospel of money, right? The theology of money. The one that most of us all have kind of heard about, you know, that we've kind of said, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to ascribe to that. But we all would say that at some point, at some time, we have struggled with it, which is the poverty gospel. The poverty gospel is the first gospel that teaches that God is glorified when you are broke, mm. that God is glorified when you don't have any. And then you, when you don't have money, but you need all of him, you need more of him. You need more of God. You don't need money. You need God. The God is, the money's not important. Money's not needed. God is important. God is needed. And this actually is rooted in foundational Christian history where there were certain men that began to really emphasize this gospel of poverty that having less is important because then you have more room for God, right? That's the poverty gospel. Most people, I will say, in the 21st century have come away from the poverty gospel, right, where they're like, uh-uh, I'm not ascribing to that. But we've allowed that gospel to still be a part of some of our decision making and how we view certain people. The second gospel is where a lot of folks have gotten tripped up and gotten caught up is the prosperity gospel. Most people will publicly say, uh-uh, I'm not about that prosperity gospel, but then secretly be like, man, I need more money. I'm sick. God, I need you to bless me. God, I need a check in the mail. God, I need this. But the prosperity gospel teaches the more you do for God, the more God will bless you. The more you do for him, the more he will bless you. That's the prosperity gospel. And to quicken this thing up, I don't ascribe to either the prosperity gospel nor the poverty gospel. What he, Alejandro heard me teach about is the purpose gospel. So and good. the purpose gospel, y'all, is that whatever God has called me to do, whatever God has called me to fulfill in the earth, that I am required to go after the resources necessary to fulfill that thing on the earth. So it's not about just acquiring money to have money. It's about acquiring money to fulfill 
purpose. Mm -hmm. So my focus is not on making money. My focus is on changing lives. And the last time I checked, in order to change lives, you're going to have to make money. I don't know anybody that's broke that's changing lives. It's going to require massive amount of money to do crusades. It takes money to build orphanages. It takes money to do anything that will have a major impact on humanity. And that, my friend, is the purpose gospel and why I believe every single Christian should be ascribing to that gospel to fulfill God's purpose on their lives. Man, that, that's so good. And it's something that you see in this space right now. And, and, and Christian entrepreneurs are kind of this underserved market. And you do have both of those where you start. It's, it's more poverty or excuse me, prosperity right now. And yeah. sometimes people, you know, I, be, I do believe prosperity with a purpose is kind of what you're saying. You know, Paul talks about he supplies seed to the sower. Yes, and, and and God, I believe God's economy runs uh, towards uh, the giver and this generosity. And so um, I, I really love that. What, what are some of the things that maybe tick you off when you see ads? Let's just keep it real. Like when you see ads or someone, or, or does that, the prosperity gospel not tick you off? What are some of the problems with buying into that? You know, I think when I come back to it, right, Paul said that there are going to be certain men who will preach the gospel out of their own selfish ambition. Mm. But at the end of the day, the gospel is preached. I am very much more about, hey, let's not be critiquing everybody's message. But at the end of the day, let's trust that God can turn that message and use that person's moment or conversation and use it for his good. So, man, I just don't get caught up. You know, I do say that, yes, a lot of people, and we all agree, bro, come on, man. Like we all know that there are some moments where we've taught things or said things and we didn't have the full understanding of what we were teaching or saying. And we had to grow up and learn a little bit, go through a little bit of life and give room that at the end of the day, we're all still evolving and we're all still being sanctified. I mean, until the day that we die, we all will be continuing to be made one with Christ. We are not perfect perfect we are being perfected you know what i'm saying like and so it's an ongoing process and so that's kind of where i'm at i don't get caught up in it because in the day i know god can use (laughs) all kind of craziness in order to draw people um unto him no that's really good and i think it's a good perspective like we might need to go back and rewind that and listen to that again because i know just to be straight up i see stuff that just makes me cringe just being straight up when i watch it (laughs) then you send your buddy a dm like look at this how what, what the theology behind me, you know what I mean? That's, um, I, but I love that, you know, I love how, how you said that the, the gospel's still being being preached and, and, and God is still drawing people um, unto him. And well, this is this is a great, a great setup for to really talk about the things that you help um, people do, which is is to make money um, with, with with your companies. And so let's talk a little bit about if someone is maybe they're getting going, they, they probably have an audience. They understand the idea. Okay. I, I got to grow an audience online. I got to figure this online thing out. I maybe been, I purchased a couple courses. Um, what is the first thing when you work with people in your masterminds, when you work with people in your products, what was the first step people need to do when it comes to launching or growing their online business? Yeah, so, I mean, I usually like to start with a framework called the circle of purpose, all right? And so I like to start there just so that we can kind of get some baseline in regards to what are we trying to do here, right? Circle of purpose starts, it's four Ps. um, And P number one is what problem are we trying to solve, right? Most of the time when people first start out wanting to do a course, um, the problem that they're trying to solve is very broad, right? But it's good to at least start somewhere. I always say that progress is better than perfection. We're here to make progress. So just writing out the problem. I help blank do blank for blank, right? Like, let's just get that sentence down where you are clear about the problem that you solve, right? Um, And then we want to now focus in on once you figure out the problem that you can solve, or honestly, bro, I have people that are not clear about what they want to do. I'll have them write down 10 different problems that they can solve. Like, hey, right, give me 10 things that you know you can help somebody do right now. You know, a better way to do that is also understanding what is something you struggled in three to five years ago that you struggled to figure out this is the thing, guys. Something you struggle to figure out, but now that you've figured it out, your whole life has changed. So good. Like, what is something? Because the key word there is struggle, and I'll talk about that in just a bit. 
because this is going to be one of the keys to your secret sauces, which is so important in today's marketing landscape that you're not just coming out with some bland sauce. You got to have a secret sauce that's tasty, that's different, that's unique. So I'll talk about that in just a bit. So that's the problem. Then we move into your people. Now, who are the people that need that problem solved? And the more clear you can be about who your people are, and honestly, today we're learning the riches are in the niches, and we're seeing the opportunity to scale a lot faster is when you are extremely clear that when I show up in a room, and if I have 100 types, hundred people in the room, and they are this person, I'm walking out a millionaire. I'm walking out more money than I came in because I know I can 100% serve serve that person. All right. So that's the people piece. Then we're going to go into proficiency. Proficiency is your story. It is your unique way of solving this problem. For example, I'll walk you through ours. When we first started, our first online business was helping singles to prepare for marriage and to find the one God's way. That was our first business, right? So problem number, people number, they don't know how to get married. They single. That's the problem. They single. People, Christian singles between the ages of 35 to 55 because they missed the college window. They're in their nine to five corporate America job. They're doing well, but they got no family. They got no love life. Their pain is high. Jamal, figure this thing out for me. Proficiency. This is where it gets really interesting because our unique selling proposition or my proficiency was me and my wife were able to figure out how to, well, not figure out, me and my wife met via Facebook. So we met via a social media platform, not a dating app, not through friends and family. We literally met from strangers on Facebook. So now that gives us a unique way of helping other people find their spouses via a social media platform. That's why we call it digital dating. All right. Now we go into a product. All right. What is a way for me to now deliver this problem and solve it? Am I going to do it through a digital course? Am I going to do it through a membership, a mastermind? Am I going to do it through a workshop, a weekend conference? So what is the vehicle? What's the package I'm going to put this in to deliver that product? Those are the four Ps. So I want to walk people through those four Ps first, because that's going to give me the baseline of what we're doing here. And out of these four Ps, this is, this is a great framework. And I love frameworks. Like I want to plan. I think most people that are watching or listening right now, they need some sort of step-by-step plan. And most people are like, okay, cool. But give me like that Facebook ad tactic I saw that you're doing to go viral. You talked about you and your wife, love story going viral. Like I want to do that thing. And 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 I go like, you got to get back to this plan. So it's a very simple, simple plan. Out of those four Ps, where do you find most people struggle? Yeah, bro. The four Ps, most, most people are going to struggle um, usually between problem and people because most people honestly are not able to clearly identify a problem that not only they can solve, but that other people want solved. <laughs> so here's what I will tell you. Passion for a problem will get you in the door. That's what will get you in the door. That's what will get you into the room. But what's going to keep you in the room or keep you in business is going to be you finally finding the thing that not that you want to do, but that people want you to do. So whenever we start working with a client, I'm excited because I'm like, hey, you got excited to come figure out how to make money off of something you're passionate about. Come on, praise God. You're so passionate about helping people figure out how to, you know, how to sew. You're so passionate about helping people figure out how to become this or do that. But now we've got to switch from you're passionate about this to are they passionate about this being solved for them, turning it away from you back to your customer. And I feel, bro, that that's the biggest struggle that most people have when they're first starting is have they found a problem that can be scaled? No, that's really good. And, and you know, you, you do launches like you're known for doing large seven figure launches um, f- for folks. When when it comes to to launching, like I, I and I love launches, like building anticipation, excitement. I talk about the difference yeah. between launching and limping. You, you got to launch when you're first onto the scene. You got to kind of do what Apple does, make it a big deal. Um, For sure. So so there's a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of people. You have talked to them before. They've come to work with you where they've launched something and they got a big audience, but they made four thousand dollars. If that they made three thousand, or they made 
a couple of sales. How do you ensure with these four, like how are you testing these four Ps to make sure that it is profitable, um, that it is someone wants? Like, are there some things that you do before the big launch? 100%. So we call that the validation launch. Um, the validation launch is the first launch that you must do before you go try to do. There's three launches that I, I work my clients through. Validation launch, internal launch, then external launch. All right. So, so validation is the launch that you're doing to simply determine, is this a problem that people need solved? Not only that, are they willing to pay for it to be solved? So, and before you even do a validation launch, you need to already have a, you know, mini audience, some group of people, not friends and family, people that you've already begun to draw around you that have this problem, that are aware of this problem. Don't just put it out on social media, but start going live, start talking and start drawing those people away into what we call your launch list. And now this launch list is somewhere between 100 to 200 people that you can get on your list via a lead magnet, via you going live and you're constantly just saying, hey guys, if you're struggling with learning how to do X, if you're struggling with how to do X, hey, I have this free thing that I would love to give you, da 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 So what I'm also seeing, bro, is is the journey of people having to quickly um, um, activate their authority. You know what I'm saying? Like quickly activate their authority because the reality is that most people come from, there's a difference between being an expert on a topic and being an authority on a topic, right? And so being an expert on a topic is you've been able to journey through something, figure out how to solve it, and you know how to do it in your head. An authority on a topic is where other people believe that you can solve the problem, right? Not just you, are there other people who have benefited from you that you now can boost up and say, hey, listen, these people, not only do I believe I can do this, but they believe I can do it too. And that's where you become an authority. So the faster you can get that mini audience that you can now help for free or for a small fee, this is the breeding ground before you get into, you know, your process of doing a validation launch. The validation launch is all, this is all a part of that validation part. Once they get on your list, then what I'm going to do is before I even create my product, I'm going to just simply put out an email series to those people, what I call the validation email sequence to simply see, is there a true desire for this program? And it's something to the degree of, hey guys, listen, my name is Boom. My name is Alejandro. You guys know me. I've been working with y'all for the last few weeks, sharing content, sharing value. If you're on my list, you already know that this is what I've done, blah, 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 blah. But guys, guess what? I'm ready to serve people on a deeper level, a deeper way. But before I create this, I got to make sure that I'm, I'm spot on. You guys will know working with me, I'm integral. I practice what I preach. So I need to know before I go create boom, boom program, is this something that you actually so need? Good. Hey, if that's the case, please let me know in the chat. Actually, here's my PayPal link. Here's my Stripe link. I am, you know, and so this is, and if nobody buys this, that'll be an indicator that I need to go do some more work. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, that to me is so much better than you going out there and planning three months of content, trying to do a five day challenge, creating a Facebook group, doing all, going out and spending $50,000 producing a course. Like, bro, we've seen it all and experienced it to where people have done all that work and got no sales because they didn't do the validation launch to actually get four or five people to say, you know what? I actually will pay for. I will pay money for that. I need that solved. I'm I'm in. And then you do the from the validation. You jump into internal, which is where we begin to put in some of the other elements: funnel creation, landing pages, the challenge. And now we're running that to just simply your organic traffic and doing it at a big scale. Then external is where we add in ads and affiliates, and that's where we happen to have our seven figure launches. Oh, come on, man! I, I I think this is this is fantastic. <laughs> you and I do very similar things in the people, the type of people that you and I. Um, um, that you and I work with, they're influencers, thought leaders, authors, and um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of failed launches, which I'll I'll get to, and we'll talk about that. Real, um, but you said something about becoming an authority versus an expert. I thought that was brilliant, but the problem is, Jamal, a lot of people um, have imposter syndrome. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'm good at this. I've, I've, I've did this at a very high level at an organization. And then I did a little bit of like consulting here and there. But, you know, and, and even Christians, sometimes they're like, I, I don't want to promote myself. 
So, so how would you talk, how would you encourage them or what would you say to those that have imposter syndrome? It's like, who am I in authority? Like, I, I, you know, I want, I want to make God famous, not me, you know, like, what would you say to those? Yeah. You know, I think the biggest piece here is separating that this is not a, um, you know, discipleship program where you're coming to make this person your mini, you know, mini me, um, you know, in that light. But what you will see that this is a business where you do have to um, appeal to a different part of the human psyche in order to get access to that place of trust. And let me say it again. When you are moving in the business realm, you have to appeal to a different part of the human psyche in order to attack in order to get that trust from them. And that is going to require you having to do some form of showcasing what you've done in order for there to be an establishment of trust for someone to open up their wallet and give you money. All right. So not only is this you having to get over your imposter syndrome, but this is also you stepping into another level of security and confidence in the thing that God has blessed experience created slash done through you because by you elevating that service my friend you are elevating your testimony of something that you went through and had to go through in order to get so i i just think there's a mindset issue and i think as you kind of begin to get into the business realm you'll begin to see that this thing isn't about you but it truly is about your product and that's the goal the goal here is not to just highlight you you're just simply the messenger you know at the end of the day when we look at some big Big names have come through the Christian faith. We are grateful that God put his message within these people, but they were just a messenger, whether it's Billy Graham or Ronhar Bonnke or T.D. Jakes or Joe Olsey, not sure who your famous preacher is. We're grateful for the messenger, but my friend, it's the message that, 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 that we're after. The message is who changed, that changed our life. The gospel is what changed everything for us. I'm grateful for Steve Jobs, but it's this daggone iPhone that changed the way I operate it. He created it, but it's the product that God is after. It's the product that people need. So my friend, your responsibility is to do everything in your power to get that product, that vehicle of transformation into the lives of other people so that they can experience the transformation that you experienced when you created it. So that's the goal there. Shift that mindset. Get away. Honestly, imposter syndrome is just a selfish attempt for the enemy to rob you of what God has done in you. And I'll pull that that thing. it's powerful and you talked about testimony like we had these in the 90s like there'd be like 57 you know people lined up on church to the testimonies and 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 i think um you know what that does in the business world your testimony becoming that authority i think just like a testimony in church it stirs up faith it stirs up belief that if he can do it man i I can do it i can do it as well and again the the perspective to think about it's not about steve jobs it's a it's about this thing here that is completely transformed and and i actually believe jamal that um you know i think it's first corinthians 10 13 says we will not boast beyond measure but boast beyond um in the regards to the area of influence that god assigned to me so i actually am crazy to believe that there are products and and ideas inside of you that you are the actually the only person the area of influence that you've assigned you're the only person that can unlock wealth and success and opportunity for people and so i'm i'm 100 percent with you and i just get excited about it of what's going to happen when people use this validation launch those four p's that you talk about and really combat you know the enemy with imposter syndrome and going man like i I am it is irresponsible for me not to take this message inside and and share it with people so yeah man you're you're hitting on the parable of the talents and i know we don't have time to go into another mini sermon i love that truly is you (laughs) you know that truly is the parable of the talent message you know when you had three servants that were entrusted by their master and the cool thing that we see there i I always have to pay attention to is it said that he gave according to their abilities which means bro before god gave you the gifts and abilities he gave you he assessed what you can and can't handle and i know bro like i know if god wanted it to be that this thing was between me and him he would have pulled those servants into a private place and said, Mm -hmm. hey guys, listen, I'm only going to say this to you. I'm not saying this to nobody else. I'm going to give you a million dollars to go work with. 
He didn't do that. He gave each of them their amounts publicly because that's you learning how to own what God has created you to do. No matter what he's done for other people, no matter what he's doing for other people, you own what God's put in you. And that's the parable of the talents. And then each of them had to be responsible to go steward what was given to them. So much we're comparing ourselves to what that person has, what that person can do versus looking within and saying, man, everything that God said I can do. He's already created me with the ability to do. I just got to unlock it, which is what you just said. And there was that one servant, bro, that said, you know what? I'm going to bury this. I'm going to keep it in the ground. And I'm going to tell y'all straight up, bro, like God is after the opportunity to for you to go take crazy risks in this world. He loves it. He desires it. And I'll tell you right now, if according to the word of God, if you're not taking risks with your life, then you're not living a biblical-based life. Tell, tell me more about that. Well, what I'm basically saying is, is that in that parable of the talents, the two of them that were given these gifts and abilities took them and doubled them. They invested them. They went and learned yeah. how to make more out of what they had. That was them taking a risk of, opportun- of potentially losing in order to gain. So if we're not out living our life on the edge of taking what God has created within us and using it to go make it make more impact, make more money, make more change, then we're not living a biblically aligned life. We're staying Mm. comfortable in our comfort zone, and that is not the life that God has called us to live. So living a life of comfort is not biblical. It's living a life of risk and faith and trust in God because at the end of the day, you don't need God to be comfortable. You need God to live on the edge. What does Jamal Miller know about risk? Bro, that's been my whole life, man. Um, You know, I think clearly, you know, a going back into story, I was on, you know, we took a major risk um, to take a position in, um, you know, in a a beautiful, amazing church. I said, you know what, I'm going to try this thing out and I'm going to see what happens. And I missed, you know, I missed God. God used that season, but it was not the right time. And I was definitely in a place where I was chasing money, chasing comfort, chasing security. And we made the decision to come back to Chicago and a job that I had lined up in Chicago fell through, bro. And that job fell through. My wife was six months pregnant. And we were taking a risk not to just take a risk to go do something crazy. on our, We were taking a risk to go back into what we feel like God was calling us to do. And everything fell apart. And that resulted in me having to go on food stamps. I was driving Uber. I was making ends meet by working multiple jobs, still trying to build our business. That was a season of risk. And in that season, God called me to sow the largest seed I had ever sown in my life. I'm on food stamps, in between jobs, wife is pregnant, six months. And God said, hey, I want you to sow this amount. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Well, this is what I prayed. I said, God, if I sow this amount, I don't want just a check in the mail. I don't want a better job. I don't want more Uber rides. God, I want an idea. I want clarity about what we're supposed to do next. Give me an idea that will create money for my children's children's children. And bro, I can tell you right now, that prayer resulted in us creating the One University, which in three months became a six-figure business, in 12 months became a seven-figure business, and began the journey of what I'm doing today. And so I can tell you right now, bro, that was a season of intense risk. And that thing don't stop. You conquer one season, we always say it, there's a new devil at every level. Every new level, there's a new devil challenging you, testing you, something you got to face. And so even in this season, man, we just shut down a seven-figure revenue stream to launch a new thing that we feel the Lord is calling us to do, taking a risk so that we can go change more lives. I love this, man. And so someone might ask, though, Jamal, they go, well, is that prosperity gospel? Like he sowed like... He sowed it for the handkerchief, you know, and 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 tell me the difference between poverty gospel and, and purpose gospel there. Because that's important, right? Yeah, I mean, to me, that people. wasn't. Op- yeah, it's very important. I wasn't sowing to get. I was sowing in order to break mm. off. Right. And when I say break off, the spirit of mammon had come on my life to where I began to trust in money more than I began to trust in God. I stopped tithing. I stopped giving. So that moment was a transaction of me saying, God, I'm putting you back in the driver's seat 
So I'm giving you my heart again. And I believe by me unlocking and breaking off the spirit of mammon, it gave me a closer slash accelerated position to be close to God so I can hear God in that moment for what he wanted to do next because I was so locked up in hustling to just try to get my next thing or what's the next moment? What's this? What's this? What's this? Versus like, God, here you go. And then that resulted in me saying, God, all right, what you got? I'm listening. And so that to me, that's the difference. It was an obedience moment. It was a moment to put us back into purpose. And I feel like sowing that seed, which, you know, we don't have time to go into the principles of tithing, but I do believe tithing is a technology, right? Tithing is a technology to guard your heart from anything that will try to steer it towards anything that's not God. And so that's why we have to tie. That's why we teach generosity. We don't teach generosity just so we can be able to say, we gave a million dollars to our orphanages. Oh, look at us, look at us, look at us, look at us. No, like giving, tithing is a technology created by God to steer and guard your heart. So, that's why we do it's it. So, so good. You, you briefly mentioned, which, which is massive, you shut down one seven-figure business to go all in with this other seven-figure dream how 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 was that when you were talking to God about that? How was that in your prayer life? How 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 what was the turmoil like? I mean, for me, I'm going, oh my gosh! Like you should have just gave it to Alejandro. You know what I mean? Like, but, like what what was that like to make that decision and trust God going all in on this next thing? Yeah, you know, I think so. so for so long, we try to make templates out of people's lives, and like the reality is, is that um, you have to imitate up to a point, right? I do believe in the power of imitation. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ, right? So you're imitating up to a point of inspiration, right? To be inspired by someone's life. And so I do believe that there are parts of my journey that have been, you know, where I've been inspired by certain people and I try to do what they do because I'm like, okay, it worked for them. Let me do what they did and I'll be successful. But like I said, you got to imitate up to a point because there's a certain point that they're doing what they were uniquely called to do. And that's what we ran up against with this new idea was I began to try to Im imitate other business owners and other leaders in the space of, okay, this is how they did it. They did this. They had this offer going, da, 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 and they were able to scale it, and they did it. And so let me, I try to create a strategy based upon my own intellect, and God really got me, bro. And so um, I, I will tell you, we're right in the middle of that transition, and I can't, you know, I love to jump back on in two, three years on the podcast and say, hey, guys, remember when I was talking about that big change we had to make? Here's where we are today, you know, and so we're in the middle of it. We're in the middle of the process, trusting God, following God to do what I believe we've been uniquely created to do on the earth. And um, and that's that's that. No, that's really over. good, man. I, I think it's going to be more than uh, sooner than two or three years for you, for sure. Just the, the just the the world class level of execution. I know that that you do. Um, you talk you talk. Um, I heard a podcast where you talked about um, or, or a video where you talked about. God accelerates things. It doesn't have to be slow. So, so you said two to three years. I think it's going to be a year because of that, what you said earlier about acceleration. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. I'll yeah. take it, bro. Okay, so just switching gears really, really quickly. You post a lot of um, receipts, um, not from others, but from 2012 and 2001 and, or, or 2011. I see a lot of your, your screenshots that you will retweet or post on your stories why do you go back and do that? Is that like kind of just a reminder to yourself? What are you doing there as you kind of documented years ago? Yeah, this is a good piece for all of you that are in the middle of whatever you're in the middle of right now is that in three to four years, if you're doing the right thing, you won't be where you are today. But the very people that you will be pulling out or pulling close or supporting, helping, serving are going to be where you are right now. So you want to be able to stay connected emotionally to that moment and that feeling. And that's why I do as much documentation, because when I get out of it three, four years from now, I'm going to forget what that felt like. I'm going to forget what that moment did to me. And I got to go re 
surface that emotion so I can put that into my copy, put that into my content, because that's what's going to relate to the audience and be able to connect with where they are to say, hey, but listen, this is where I was at. I was sitting in my car. I just got a job denied. Somebody, the, the person told me I was unqualified. I couldn't do it. I didn't have the resume, didn't have the qualifications, blah, 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 blah. But listen, I, and then me, I took a picture right in my car. You know, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, but the reality was that moment came with a story that relates with people because that's where a lot of folks are right now. Like, yo, bro, I just got denied from a job, just got told I didn't get the job, blah, 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 blah. And then I can say, but hey, listen, y'all, that's not what the story ends three years later i'm now a multi seven-figure earner now i've been in forbes now i've been in inc 5000 fast growing companies of america but here's what you got to do you need to you know and so now it's like giving people that strength to see beyond their current situation and to unlock Mm. vision for the future that's why i do it so all of my entrepreneurs listening right now document your journey (laughs) document it every single piece every single moment y'all listen when i'm doing my stories and i'm you see alejandro you follow me i'm I'm documenting hey y'all we just made a big turn to go towards sunday plus we're going all in i don't know what we're going yeah those those moments are documented so five years from now when sunday plus is five thousand or ten thousand people twenty thousand members i can be like do y'all remember when we first started i didn't know this thing was gonna work da, da, da. look at this screenshot i didn't know what was gonna happen i have a screenshot bro of me doing a webinar <laughs> And I was a part of a four-person mastermind. I did a webinar and got no sales, wow. none, bro. Nobody bought. And I remember posting in that group saying, y'all, like, I am so depressed. I'm so sad. I don't know what I did wrong. And I'm just going in about me feeling like I am literally an ultra, ultra, ultra failure. And, bro, I was able to use that same screenshot to encourage my mastermind during one of our meetings. Y'all listen to this. How many of y'all felt this? But well, guess what? The guy that you respect, the guy that, you, that coaches y'all, literally went through the same exact thing you went through. Bro, that's the stuff that people need. So anyway, that's why I do that, man. Document your journey, y'all. P- pull your phone out once a week. Talk out. Talk to your phone. You ain't got to post it on social media yet because it ain't the content that people need right now because you ain't crossed over yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think there's a little bit more to my journey because I've crossed I've done this before, you know, but I don't share right. everything, um, but I do share bits and pieces. Take people along with you. No, I love, I love that. Um, you've felt like a complete failure right here. You've been on food stamps, had to do Uber, trying to be successful, right? It's like, oh, I got, you know, I'm trying to be an entrepreneur, but I'm driving Uber. I'm trying to be an entrepreneur, and I got food stamps. I'm on food stamps. What, what would you say just, you know, looking in the last 10 years, what are you and Natasha most What are you most proud of, of what you guys have built together? Man, that's such a good question. Um, You know, I think for us, when I look at like, I mean, all the different things that we've done, you know, um, at the end of the day, the thing that I'm most proud of is our resilience to continue to combat the forces of hell in regards to our marriage, our family, our personal lives to remain integral to our front facing community and not have to show up as liars or as frauds as people that were here. And now no, I'm very transparent and honest about our process and our journey. I've heard this on a, a, a article success is not owned. It's rented and every day rent is due. I'm going to say it again. Success is not owned. It's rented and everyday rent is due. So it's like just remaining humble. So for me, bro, I'm most proud of me and Natasha's resilience to keep going despite all of the attacks of the enemy to truly try to knock us out of the game and make us go back and shrink into fear, shrink into the people we used to be and not stand forward and confident in who God's powerful, man. Well, before we get to these last couple questions, man. Just want to say I'm proud of your resilience too, man. I'm proud of everything that you've done. You, you've been an inspiration. I love following you. You know, the algorithm shows you, um, you know, what you engage with most and what you watch the most. And and you're one of my few that I'm always seeing. And so it's so inspiring. And I know if it's inspiring me that's built these successful companies, I know it's inspiring so many entrepreneurs, you have this saying that you, you want to pastor, you know, you're, you're literally my, one of my favorite, not just preachers to Christians, but uh, in the entrepreneur space, but you're one of my favorite communicators, period. And I just, 
I just want to honor you, man, and say that I love all that you do. And you, uh, I know God is pleased, man, for sure. Well, I, I take that to heart. You know, it's been a very challenging season. And I think we all have to go through challenging seasons because I don't believe God humbles you to keep you humbled. He humbles you so he can exalt you. And that's the Bible, right? Those that exalt themselves mm. will be humble, but those who humble themselves will be exalted. And, you know, and so that's why I just are, encourage everybody just remain mm. humble remain humble don't get so caught up in you 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 your own image how people view you and i'm closing my eyes because i i, I have to speak yeah. to myself sometimes and remind myself jamal this thing is not about you one day we will all stand before god at that judgment seat and have to stand before him and give an, a, an account for how we lived our life this isn't to determine making it into heaven that's not the goal here, y'all. Salvation is the easiest thing to attain. I really, I'm telling you, he created that way. He created to make yeah. salvation easy, but living a life submitted to him post-salvation, a sanctified life, a purposeful life is mm -hmm. not easy. And that's where we really need Christ. And so that's the goal. I want to be able to stand before him and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You may enter into my kingdom. And do it with man, just sheer excitement for the future of reigning with him forever. It's, it's a narrow path, like it's really narrow. Um, well, Jamal, what what is what would you say your definition of holy hustle is, bro? When I saw the question, um, I was like, I love that. Um, I love just the 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 opportunity to establish a fresh and new way of serving God's kingdom at the most optimum way. So when I hear holy hustle, I hear a, a, a divine tension between money and the ability to be successful and the ability to attain high level um, notoriety and respect for your craft. I, I, that's the tension between like success and the tension of faithfulness. Right. And faithfulness is no matter how it's working out, no matter what I see, no matter how I feel, no matter how much it's working for me or producing for me, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to continue to be um, be be um, content. I'm going to continue to be steadfast. I'm going to continue to be focused and in tune. When I hear holy hustle, I hear a divine reverence for being successful, but also being faithful and you being being able to mirror, match those two things together and manage them because they truly do try to war against one another. Those who are faithful sometimes aren't seen as successful. And those who are successful aren't not always seen as faithful. But the goal for Holy Hustle is that you'll be able to be both. That you'll be seen as someone who is extremely successful and someone who has been extremely faithful. Faithful to the priorities. Faithful to your family. Faithful to your friends. Faithful to yourself. While also being successful. Being, build, building, building a castle that has legacy. That building wealth and being able to change the world and having nice cars, having nice houses, having nice things that you can be able to say, this ain't nothing but the glory of God on all that I got. But at the end of the day, man, this thing is unto him. That's what I hear. Holy hustle, bro. Um, so that's like a prophetic moment, right? I think that was really powerful just in regards to just bringing language to Absolutely, what you're man. building. You can end right there, bro. That was powerful, man. Got chills. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Anyways, man, that, that is incredible, bro. If you go back, you're able to time travel and uh, to a younger version of Jamal, maybe when he's struggling or when he's starting out, um, where probably a lot of people may be struggling or they're kind of starting out their journey to launch courses or coaching. Um, what advice would you give to that younger Jamal? Yeah, man, to the younger Jamal that is just getting started, that has, um, you know, probably struggling with confidence, struggling with clarity. Um, I would tell that younger Jamal to go immediately find a community that can remind him that there is so much more in him to not do the fight alone, to not journey through it alone, that you are not made to do life alone. You got to go be intentional to find you a community of people, men, women, that can truly pull the gold out of you. Look up, find you some mentors, some leaders. I always say there's an opportunity between the ages of 18 and 25 where 
that's the time that people will see themselves in you where they will open themselves up at a greater rate to help you, to push you. And I'm talking successful people, people who've made it, people who are super successful. If you go to them between the age of 18 and 25 and ask for their help, more than likely they will say yes because they see themselves in you. So I would say to that younger Jamal, bro, go find you that mentor, go find you that leader that sees a spark in you, that believes in you, that can take you to the next level. And then find your friends who will make sure you don't quit, you don't give up, that are keeping you accountable accountable to pushing forward. And then most importantly, find you some other people that you're making sure you're pouring back into so you don't make it all about you. That is the encouragement that I would give younger Jamal so that he keeps the main thing, the main thing on the journey to purpose. Come on, man. Come on. Well, Jamal, that was powerful. This has been such a great time spent. And um, where can folks learn a little bit more about you and tell folks about Sunday Plus and how they can get connected with that and what it is. Yeah, absolutely. So Sunday Plus is a platform that we're creating for believers that truly are desiring to go deeper in their faith. This is a place that we are creating because Sunday isn't enough. We believe that God is doing something very divine where he's creating opportunities for people to press beyond their limitations and begin to maximize every area of their life. And I believe when you get better spiritually, you get better, period. And so we want to help people to do that. And we have a very variety of courses. You can go to sundayplus.co and learn more. Three ways to learn. We have self-paced courses around the Bible, around leadership, around entrepreneurship, helping you to grow in your faith, helping you to grow relationally. This is a powerful way for you to grow self-paced courses. Or we have live classes that we do. We bring on experts to teach live classes. Or we have what we call 30-day learning sprints. And this is where you can go in and learn with other people and actually begin to make the information turned into transformation by applying it to your life. And so that's Sunday Plus. Love for you to check it out. You can follow me at Jamal Miller if you want to keep up with my entrepreneurial journey and all the great things that we're doing on the entrepreneur side, working on a brand new mastermind with my good friend, Anthony O'Neill, that you guys can definitely at some point check out called We Create Millionaires. And so that's for those of you that are killing it already, that will love to jump into a community where you can be challenged. And so that's what we got going on, bro. Love to continue to rock with your folks, man. And I just want to take this moment, man, just being the first podcast, bro, to prophesy into the future of Holy Hustle. I'm just so grateful to know you, Alejandro. So grateful for your courage to step out and do something like this. I know we were saying earlier, it's so painful when you niche down, but this is now your attempt to begin to draw the people that God has called you to serve. And we always say your vibe attracts your tribe. And so, bro, just know that in this process of you building out your audience, that there are people that specifically are for you and that they will connect to you. It won't be hard. It won't be strive, a striving process. It's going to feel so easy and so just like how in the world am I just just now doing this. I wish I would have done this five years ago, 10 years ago, but bro, this is the divine time for you to step out, for people to know you for you. And bro, you're going to serve people beyond just entrepreneurship and wealth. You're truly going to get into the crevices of healing the inner parts of their soul and who they are in their personhood. So man, I'm just excited for Holy Hustle, excited for the future of this podcast. I'm praying God give you the biggest names in the game that will say yes to being on this so this show can grow, bro, beyond your wildest Man, I receive it, man. I, I- for those, just just get ready as you continue to watch the podcast because I'm a crier. That uh, that 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 made me very emotional, man. And I'm gonna go cry right now. <laughs> I love you, bro. I appreciate you, and so grateful that you did this with me, man. Yeah.